So today we're going to complete Zechariah's fourth vision, and that means we're going to look at Zechariah chapter 3, verses 9 and 10. Listen in. For behold, the stone that I have laid before Yeshua, upon the stone are seven eyes. Behold, I will engrave its inscription, says the Lord of hosts, and I will remove the iniquity of the land in one day. In that day, says the Lord of hosts, everyone will invite his neighbor under his vine and under his fig tree. So this scene that greets Zechariah is a scene of the end, right? This is after the consummation. Jesus has come. Uh, the redeemed are redeemed. We're in the earth made new. Things are really awesome. And here's everybody under their vine. That means you've got your, your grapes out there. Uh, under your fig tree, you've got fresh figs to share, uh, or you can just pluck them off. And, you know, what we, one of the neatest things we get is if you happen to have a garden or do some gardening is when you have some nice produce and you can take and share with other people. That's what gives pleasure in the new earth is sharing, is giving. Remember, there's two different kinds of love, right? There's self-love in which we take from others, and there's other love in which we like to give to others. And so at the end, it'll be other love that prevails. So Gario sees this scene of people who are happy to share, uh, inviting people, hey, come over to my house, let's have a big shindig. And so that's the picture we have here. He's confronted by this picture of peace in the world, things, good things happening, uh, people who would prefer to share rather than to take because we're, we're after it. Jesus has, has finished. Second coming has happened. So it's good days, good days. So there's a secular fairy tale that most people have bought into. There was non-life, and then somehow we went from non-living to living stuff, and then it's just kind of a continual evolution. And if you watch these sci-fi flicks, eventually, usually what happens is when people become super evolved, they sort of dematerialize and become one with the universe. It's, it's uh, really a, quite the fairy tale. And God's plan, though, is different. He made us good. Genesis 131 says, in the beginning, we were made very good. Tov me'od. And we are good. And then he redeems us and brings us back. And then we're in the new earth and we're all that humans were meant to be. So the Christian picture is very different from the evolution, survival of the, the most violent kind of picture, because ours is a survival of the most kind and most gentle. So we have this part in our text today about the rock, this weird rock with seven eyes or seven facets. Some scholars tell us this has to do with the rock that was a foundation in the temple. Some say it might be associated with the rock that Moses struck, and when he struck it, water gushed out. And honestly, this is uh, verse 8 is one of the most uh, disputed ones in the whole uh, book of Zechariah. There's not unanimity on what it means. There's a lot of uncertainty here. I'm not going to come up here and spout to you some exact thing of what it means because I'm telling you the truth. I don't know what it means. What I do know is that in the text, it's associated with removing sin from the land. How does God remove sin from the land? Well, ultimately, it always comes down to him removing sin from our hearts. So what I need to do is I need to cooperate with him. I need to let him show me what sin is, show me what I'm doing wrong, show me his pathway, and I need to allow him to take away my sin. I need to say, please, Lord, forgive me and transform me. Let this not ever come again. So I need to be a cooperator and not a rebel against the king. So what I do know is if I'm inclined to keep everything for me, keep my own stuff, if I'm inclined to keep it and just build bigger barns to keep it, that's a different spirit than the spirit of Jesus on the cross where he says, Father, forgive them, they don't know what they're doing. As they nailed him, literally, the, the, hand, the nails through his hands, he gave himself for them. He was in a giving spirit. So that's a different spirit. That's the spirit I want to be of. And we need to let him help us come and, and be that, that of that spirit. And then anything's possible. God bless you. See you tomorrow morning. Mm -hmm.